In this episode, we talk with a world-renowned neon artist. This man sparked an entire industry around his electrified creations. This is The Outliers, Todd Sanders. Well, Todd, man, it's so freaking great to meet you. Happy to have you. Yes, yeah. thank you so much for you letting bet. us come out here. I'm actually really excited because I don't know the first damn thing when it comes to neon. So this is all Greek to me and I'm, I'm excited to learn. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a great balance between science and art. Tell me about the materials that you use, like the tools and like, how the hell do you make these things? I make all the full-size patterns. Everything's done by hand. There's no computer that ever really touches this. And then uh, I'll make a metal pattern, neon pattern, mounting pattern, paint pattern. The only thing that's new is all of the controls inside are solid state now. So this piece weighs 60 pounds probably. No if way. If it had all of the... I mean, because that's giant. I yeah, thought that'd be enormous. like 200 yeah, yeah, pounds. Yeah, it would be like you, you would think. It would be if it had the, the old transformers because they're the size of a shoebox and they huh. weigh 40 pounds each. Wow, I mean, that, that's a really good example of how technology can like make us better yeah. even in these like older age old techniques. I've avoided doing computer aided yeah. tech, you know, like design and stuff because I, I, I think people gravitate towards my work because of they see a human did The it. human yeah, element, yeah, the, yes. The, the human hand. Well, and I mean, it. this doesn't look human made though. That's what's well, even cooler. Well, yeah, it is, and it's it's imperfect. I call it perfectly imperfect. Oh. There's something, when, when something is too perfect, it, it looks manufactured. Yeah, and right? it, it loses its uh, appeal, it loses the, the, the human touch, you yeah. know, and people want to know, you know, like someone was here, a human did this. When I do something that's kind of symmetrical. I make it asymmetrical, just cool. just in, 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 like, intentionally. Mm -hmm. You know, you're making paint stencils, metal stencils, neon stencils. So you're pretty like diverse among mediums of art too, right? It's a lot of, you know, the old world technology. You have to know metal, you have to know how to hand letter, mm -hmm. you have to know how to draw a good neon pattern and then you have to assemble it in a way yeah, I mean, this neon has to be bent. It's glass, right? It so, is, yeah. so you're like, can you tell me about that process? Because that to me just blows my mind. My neon bender, Gary, he actually takes the five foot stick and he's got my pattern, but it's all in reverse because the only flat spot is the surface. Mm. So everything has to be bent backwards. And so he corks one end of the tube and then the other end, he puts this rubber cork with a hose that goes in his mouth and when he gets it hot he's got several fires one of them is like a ladybug or something and it's like a lot of jets to intensify like for a weld but then he's got one that's like a real long fire and he'll get this neon super hot and it's just like a big 1700 degree wet noodle and he, oh put, my he puts God. it on the thing and he just bends it around and he sits there until it cools and then it'll start and do do the next piece. It's, they make it look so easy, and when you try it, you're just like, ah, this is, this is. It sounds know, incredibly dangerous. It, too. It's dangerous. It's it's uh, you're dealing with mercury and lead, and you know, if you're not careful, a lot of the early neon benders went insane because they were breathing mercury vapor. Wow. You know, so yeah. God, there's so much like lore around this. I like, know, yeah. Tradition, yeah. you know? So he's essentially coloring in the lines, more or less. Yeah, I mean, he, I, I, I have nightmares. Like, I wake up and go, what if we didn't have Gary? You know, like, because <laughs> like, he is such an essential yeah. part of what I do. And it's kind of hard to, to find someone that, you have to dedicate your life, like for two years, you have to do crappy neon mm -hmm. until you can make something that is commercially viable. It's hot, it's Texas, it's 106, and you're standing in fires, you know? And I apprenticed at a neon shop and the lady taught me how to bend neon. And it, like after a little while, I'm like, yeah, this is, uh, I'm gonna do the other stuff and, <laughs> and leave that to my heroes. Yeah, you know? find your lane. Yeah, yeah. I surround myself with really good craftsmen that know I'm gonna bust their balls yeah. trying to get this stuff done right but uh, I mean look at the little antennas at the top and then not only is it the sides cut straight but they they follow yeah. like within three quarters of an inch of the outside face and so 
I drive them crazy, I know, and, and I'm, I, drive them, I drive my neon vendor crazy, but I demand excellence and I sell them at a premium. And yeah. So that's what I, that's yeah, what I and, want to happen. And your customers demand it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they don't even know, but it's a feeling you get. You'll feel that someone cut a corner or you'll feel that someone went the extra mile, you know, yeah. and you won't even know you're viscerally, you know, you, you don't know that no one's pointed that out to you, but, but you'll feel it. Tell me more about that because that is the same thing. When we do an excellent job in construction, the best jobs go unnoticed. You're like, they know it looks beautiful. Yeah. They almost don't know why. And it's like, we're literally tailoring how we make our living to an X factor that the people that purchase these things might not even understand. What's you're, the freaking point? You're, well, it, it's important that you do that because you're beyond their comprehension, but you're not beyond their energy their, their, their feeling about this piece you can feel quality when you're around it whether it's a beautiful car or a house or a, a work of neon art you know you, you feel quality more than you understand it i don't know if many people know this but you built a sign for the most famous podcast in the world i mean this sign is in the backdrop of the joe rogan experience Every time he does a podcast, this is seen by millions and millions of people. Yeah. And I just have to know, what's the story behind that? Did Joe contact you? Like, how did you get in touch? I mean, I just want to know all about it. A friend of mine named Brigham Bueller came to me and he said, hey, Joe Rogan's moving to Austin and I want to give him a present as a welcome to Austin present. And I said, okay, it's going to be ton of money yeah and he's like okay we were watching a movie one night so i, I did this kind of curved joe rogan and i did that and i was like well it needs something and joe's into ufos and mm -hmm. things so i did this ufo and i'm like what if the ufo is like stealing joe rogan <laughs> yeah. and so i bought this like bendable like a maquette body man and <laughs> i hung him from a string and i sketched him you know I'm like, that's it, man, it's a UFO stealing Joe Rogan. And then I said, okay, it's ready. It's, it's ready for you to pick up and go visit Joe Rogan. He goes, I don't know Joe Rogan. <laughs> what? I'm like, well, what the hell am I gonna do? <laughs> so it sat in here for months. And we have a friend that's a Hollywood writer and I called him and I said, do you know anyone that knows Joe Rogan? He's like, well, I know some comedians. I know one guy. This friend of Joe's contacted him and was like, you gotta you know, see this neon art piece. And so Joe contacted me, he's like, that's dope as man, you know. And so I put it in my pickup. I've got a 59 Chevy and I drive it out to his place. And Joe pulls up and he goes, all right, yeah, let's go in here. So he goes in his control booth, little recording area. And he's like, okay, you and your buddy bring this in. Okay, hold it up, move it. Uh, okay, right there and screw it to the wall. And he was like gauging the camera to it. Wow. And he's like, put it right there. And I had no idea it was gonna be even on TV. He's been a really good guy about the whole thing. And um, I'm super proud. I mean, I've done pieces for Willie Nelson, Billy Gibbons, and they're just regular folks. I mean, they're, Joe's just a regular guy. He lives in my neighborhood, you know. Mm -hmm. His house is nicer than mine, <laughs> you know. I don't think he has to, you know, lift heavy things that mm -hmm. much, but you know. <laughs> I think fame, in a way, makes you more of what you are. It's like cocaine. It, if you're an asshole, you're a huge <laughs> asshole. You know, if, if you're nice, yeah. you're way nicer. Yeah. You know? like, so, um, <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, so Joe's a super nice guy. This is my church and this is my sacred space. And when I get in here, I'm in a spot that I'm not in anywhere else. I, I, it, it feels so great, it, whether it's drawing or making a pattern or assembling or something, it just, and I'll pass on a job. If, if it feels like it's not gonna be that way with me, I'm just like, no, I'm, I'm here to experience, not to make your money, you know. Like Amen, man. That. So, Flow state. Yeah, exactly, yep. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the best place to be in. Yep, yep. Tell me how you come up with these designs. I mean, that's such a freaking hard part in itself, let alone all this technical stuff. I made this razor blade as a tribute to James Rosenquist, who was one of my favorite pop artists, and he always kind of 
put a razor blade somewhere and paint it into his work. I mean, it's like a songwriter or anybody that's trying to come up with a new idea. It, it, you gotta, what? Oh, yeah. Like uh, the luchador, I was in a Mexican restaurant and there was this movie poster of two luchadors fighting and I went, wow, that's really powerful. But how do I do that in neon? And I try to boil it down to its, like I try to take as much design down to just what makes it iconic. Mm -hmm and it's his mask. And so I made just his head instead of an entire luchador. Yeah. Uh, what you're describing is all internal. You have to outdo yourself. Yeah, you've, yeah. you've been so creative for decades and now you have to be more creative than you were. That's kind of like a special place in hell to be sometimes, right? I'm trying to compete with myself from yesterday yes. and outdo that guy. And I don't give a crap about the rest of them, you know, but I'm trying to outdo that guy. when I get inspired now i have to honestly just drop everything and, and my wife sarah understands this like i've got to do this and we're gonna piss a few people off that are well where's my peas i want to put up in my kitchen I'm like i've got to do this you know and i would probably wouldn't have made this piece but I, I a client said they wanted a robot and so i sketched this and she's like oh that's not exactly the robot i want a different one so i, I made a different one and i've got it finished now but I, I show this to a client that wow. buys my pieces and he's like, I'll take it, I'll take it, you know. The thing that added so much was making the rocket blast off the feet. Yes. You know, that's the thing that, that kind of separated it from cliche for me. Well, and it's not only the neon, it's all the art underneath. I mean, those painted flames look amazing. Oh, thanks, yeah. You know, like that, it, it's crazy how much layers there are and you don't really, like in a photo, you cannot appreciate it as like seeing it in real life. When you get in and just start pulling a brush thick and thin and doing all you know, that really, like, I'll look up and she's mad and I haven't made dinner and gotten home and I'm like, shit, it's seven o'clock. You know, like I had no idea what time it was. Yep. You know, I, I can actually lose time making these pieces. And you know, you getting to see it in the, these people's gorgeous homes in an amazing game room where everyone oohs and awes over it. It's like a piece of you that they're putting in their house. That's yeah, like a, yeah. you know, this is like a relic. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, I've made hundreds, maybe a thousand pieces in my life, but w when will the last one still be in existence? It, it's going to be hundreds of years yeah. beyond my lifetime. So they're a way of saying Todd was here, you know? Hell like, yeah. I was here and I made, this was what I did with my time. And I met Sarah in 2005 and I told her, you know, I love what I'm doing. We're making neon signs all over town, but what I really wanted to do was make these as fine art pieces. And she said, uh, if that's your dream, let's chase it together. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll go for it. Man, it was terrifying for a couple of years. The concept of this as a, something you'd put in your home was not even thought of, you know, no one would even consider that. I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna educate you. This is cool, you know. Take, and I used to say, take it home. Give me two weeks. If you don't like it, give it back, you know? And so we'd sit on their check for a while and like, oh, they're gonna keep it, you know? Yeah. No one ever brought it back. No one ever brought a piece back. The happiest accomplishments of my life is to inspire people to do that. Just go out and scare yourself. But if you're gonna devote yourself to something, devote yourself to something you truly love because for a lot of years, you're not gonna make any money at it, you know? And people tell me now, like, oh, I'm, you gave me the, the, the courage to quit my job and I started this thing. I'm making these things in my garage and selling them. I'm like, man, that's fantastic, you know? Yes. Like that, now I have lived, you know? Yes. It, it, I make art and all that, but I really, number one, I love to inspire people. Go for it. And, and that's where greatness comes from. I've lived in a field in a travel trailer with no electricity and no water oh. for a while just to, to keep things going you know, before I bought this place. I was willing to do that. It didn't come to that again, but, um, and having someone to share it with really made it more special for me. You know, I listened to a lot of practical people. My dad, and I grew up in a small town in East Texas, and um, you know, everyone really pushed hard to, to not color outside the lines and things. I, I don't know, I mean, it, it, it's just, it, I, I think I was born with creativity, but 
I think everyone is, but um, I think they also let it go and they give it up and, and they, it comes back and it's like a boiler. Like it, it'll, it'll start popping up in different ways if you're, if you're not careful. Um, if you don't feed that or even acknowledge it, if you like suppress it, it's gonna, it's gonna pop back up. Um, or you'll just be a vapid, vacant person that you know yeah. is unhappy with life. I love life. I'm, I love being creative. I'm grateful for my time that I have on this earth, and I want to at least let people know that I appreciated the gift I was given of a life, and um, to leave something behind that said Todd was here. You know. Well, Todd, I just want to thank you, like well, thank deeply, you. Yeah, man. You, I enjoyed you're, this. You're such an inspiration. I mean, obviously to me and other entrepreneurs, and like even more so the Austin art scene. I mean, I think you're a lot more influential than than you even realize. And uh, I just want to thank you, you and Sarah, for taking the time out today, man. Thanks for having us on. Well, thanks for having us on your your program, and thanks for considering us. And Absolutely, it's, it's an honor. Yeah, awesome, yeah. man.